Hello friends, welcome back to the design patterns video series. In this video, I am going to discuss one real time example of singleton design pattern. Please watch our previous video where we discussed lazy loading versus eager loading in singleton design pattern. Some of the real time scenarios where we can use singleton design pattern are as follows. Managing service proxies. As you know, invoking a service API is an expensive operation in an application. The process that taking most of the time is creating the service client in order to invoke the service API. If you create the service proxy as single done, then it will improve the performance of your application. Next, managing database connections. You can also create a database connections as single done, which can improve the performance of your application. Next, logging. In an application, performing the I/O operation on a file is an expensive operation. If you create your logger as single done, then it will improve the performance of the application. Next, cache. caching. Caching means, as you know, fetching the data from a database is a time consuming process. In your application, you can cache the master and configuration data in memory, which will avoid the database calls. In situations like this, the single done class can be used to handle the caching with thread synchronization in an efficient manner which can drastically improve the performance of your application. Data sharing. Data sharing means if you have any constant values or configuration values then you can keep those values in single turn so that these can be read by other components of the application. Let us understand one real time example of single turn design pattern. In this video we are going to discuss how to create a custom logger library using the singleton design pattern which logs the exceptions to an external file using an MVC application. In this demo, we are going to use the following employee table. Let us open SQL Server Management Studio and create the necessary database table with the required data. Right? So I have already type the necessary SQL script. So here we are going to create one database called employee DB. Then I'm using that database that is employee DB. Uh, I'm creating the employee table with five columns that is ID, name, gender, salary and department. Here ID is going to be my identity column as well as this is also going to be my primary key column. Let's execute and create the employee table. Once you create the employee table, then we are going to insert some text data. So let's insert this data yeah we are done now we can verify the employee table yes we are getting the data as expected so our db part is ready next we will create one sp.net mvc application so let us open visual studio and create the mvc application okay so once you open visual studio then select file new project option from the context menu then select web and select asp.net web application provide the name as singleton mvc you can provide any name as per your choice select the location where you want to store the project right so i'm going to store this under the project section so once you provide the name and location then click on the OK button. Once you click on the OK button, then it will uh, open this new sp.net web application window where you can select the template, right? As we are going to create MVC application, so I'm selecting the MVC template. And uh, one more thing you need to remember, you do not need to select any authentication. So the authentication should be no, auth uh, no authentication. Once you select the MVC template, then click on the OK button right so further one more thing you need to remember this mvc checkbox should be selected right then click on the ok button once you click on the ok button then it will take some time to create the sp.net mvc application with the required uh, files and folder structure that's great we have created the mvc application right so once we create the mvc application then we need to use entity framework database first approach to communicate with the employee db that we have just created. So let's add the edio.net entity data model. To do so right click on the models folder and select add new item right. Once you select then it will open the add new item window. Here we need to select the data 
and we need to select edio.net entity data model then we need to give one name for our entity data model and here as we are going to interact with the employee data so i am providing the name as employee data model right once you provide the name then click on the add button once you click on the add button then it will it will open this entity data model wizard to select the model right as uh, as we have already the database is created so we are going to select this option that is ef designer from database what it says it will create a model in the ef designer based on an existing database so select this model and click on the next button in the once you click on the next button it will open choose your data connection window right so here we need to select the data connection right so click on the new connection button it will open this connection properties window first we need to select the data source right so as we are going to interact with sql server database the data source is going to be my microsoft sql server right so then we need to provide the server name right so to provide the server name what i'm uh, so you need to copy the server name and provide it here right so i'm providing the server name then the authentication so whether you want to use authentication as windows or sql that you have to decide so if you are selecting sql server authentication then you need to provide the username and the password but i am going with the Windows authentication right once you select the authentication type then you need to select the database right as we are going to interact with employee db database so i am selecting employee db as the database right then test the connection if test connection is succeeded that means the information provided in the connection properties window are correct so uh, are correct next click on the ok button right once you click on the ok button the connection string is created right then it is asking us to provide the connection string name right so here you can provide any name so i am giving the name as employee db context and this is the name of the connection string which will be created inside the uh, web config class right then click on the next button then it will ask you to choose the entity framework version right as you can see here uh, asking whether you want to use 6.x or 5o so that is basically depend on your choice so i am uh, going to work with the latest version that is entity framework 6.x so select 6.x and click on the next button so once you click on the next button then it will open choose your database object and settings window right so from this window we need to select the database tables the database views storage procedure and functions that right so which are already created in the database and what are the models uh, that means what are the tables views functions and storage procedure you want to include in your edmx file right so as we have already one uh, table in our database so select that table right once you select that table then provide the namespace so i am giving the namespace as model right and uh, click on the finish button right once you click on the finish button then it will take some time to create the necessary models based on the database employee db right yes our edmx file is created with the model right let's save the changes right if you look at the properties window then it is added the necessary dll that is entity framework entity framework dot sql server as well as if you look at the models folder then it is added the edmx file that edmx file contains the context class right and as well as the employee model build the solution right once your model is ready then let us add a folder into our project right so let us add a folder with the name logger into our project so this folder is going to contain all the logging related classes right once you created the folder let us add one interface with the name ilog so select add a new item uh, then select visual c sharp then select the interface and then provide the name as ilog right so click ok so this this is going to be a public interface and this is going to be one method that is void log exception and this exception method is going to take one parameter that is string message right so it, our interface is ready now let's add another class that is log into the logger folder right so this is log class and this log class is going to be my singleton class right so so whatever code i have already typed in the notepad so let me copy paste the log class code
okay so this is my singleton class as per the definition of singleton class the class should be shield right and it should be have private constructor and further if you notice this class is implement the ilog interface and provide implementation for the log exception class so we are getting some exception let us uh, add the required namespaces yeah all the exception gone right so let's understand this class so the class is created as shield this is the definition of singleton design button it should have a private constructor right right uh, returning the singleton instance by using the get instance property further if you notice here we are using eager loading right so uh, we already discussed the concept eager loading in our previous video right so this get instance property returning the instance of the singleton class now the important is log exception class right so this log exception class first create the file name and uh, the file name is created based on the exception and the date time string right log path that is basically specify where this file is going to be created then we create a string builder object then we append the message along with the date time and finally write the message into the file and if you notice the definition of this class is declared in the uh, ilog interface and we have implemented that definition here so once the client once the client get the instance of this log log class then he can access this log exception methods right so this is our, this is our singleton class so once we created the log class then we need to add one controller so right click on the controller folder then select add controller option and here select mvc5 controller with views using entity framework right so click on the add uh, select this option and click on the add button once you click on the add button then it will ask you to provide two things first is the model class what is the model class so the model class is going to be employee so select employee then what is the db context class the db context class is employee db context right so select this class once you provide the model class and the db context class then you can give the employees controller name so i am going with the default one so once you provide this information then click on the add button so once you click on the add button then what the asp.net mvc framework will do is it will create the employees controller with the required action method and as well as the corresponding views yes you can see this is the index action method which will display the list of employees data this is the details action method which will display the a particular employee information this is basically to create the employee that is the get version and this is the post version of the create action method right similarly this is edit action method get and this is edit action method post and this is the for delete right so we have already we have created so the mbc framework will created the necessary things for us now let us see how to use the logger class here right the singleton object here so let us see how we can use the logger class so first we have to create one private read only i log type variable i log underscore i log right then within the constructor of the controller within the constructor we are going to initialize this private i log variable so i log equals to so as you know inside the log class this is the shield class right so this log class having one static property get instance and that static property will return me the log class instance so what we need to do we need to call that static property log dot get instance right so log dot get into we are getting one error yes let us resolve the namespace issues right so the exception is gone right so once we have uh, created the singleton instance and then what we need to do is we need to write some log right so what i'm doing here i log dot log exception okay so i'm giving some uh, exception message some exception occurred right so similarly i'm writing another exception message before returning the view so what i'm doing here is intentionally when uh, intentionally within the details action method i'm logging some in uh, exception details right so before uh, once the uh, once the 
a detailed section method starts its execution and before returning the view i'm logging some exception right so that's it we are done with our implementation now run the application okay okay we are getting this the home page default so we are getting the home page right so what we need to do is we need to click employees slash we need to provide the employee slash index url in the employees and index url right so that's it we are getting the index view of the employees controller now click on the detail section method which should log to error information in the file so click on the details we are getting the employee information that's fine now let's move to the code so where the file is created right so right click on the project and select open file in open folder in file explorer and you can see here the exception details right uh, one log file right so just click on it and you can see here it log two lines right so this is how we can implement logging uh, as a singleton object in our application right let's go back to the presentation uh, you are working with any real-time applications you are going to create many controllers right even with uh, even if we have many controllers even if each controller is going to be executed many times the singleton instance is going to be created only once and that singleton instance is going to be shared by all all the controller and all the action methods right which can improve the performance of your application right in the next video i'm going to discuss the difference between singleton and static class in c sharp with examples here in this video i try to explain one real time example of singleton design button that is error logging in case you need the code and the text version of this video then the link for the same is provided in the video description section i hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching this video